What's up, webheads? Get your pen and paper ready because I'm about to kick off this top 10 most anticipated list. Hey, all you webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, you're with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you my top 10 most anticipated comic books. This is for February 19th. 2020. That's right, fans. This is the video series where each and every week I show you my top 10 most anticipated comics for next week in hopes for you guys to take some notes and maybe make decisions on what comic books to buy because it's never too early to start that pull list. So guys, at any time, if you like this video, Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss any content from me. And guys, I have a new Facebook group page. If you guys would love to join that, that would be great. It's called Comic Book Corner 2.0 Webheads Unite. Yes, if you want to become a true member of the Webheads, go ahead and join that Facebook group page. It's a lot of fun. I post all kinds of great things on there, some behind the scene things as well. So join that today. All right, so before we kick off this countdown, we're going to get into the hot seat. In the hot seat this week is the book that I am making a decision if I still want to buy it or drop it or whatever it is. And that book this week goes to um, Plunge Issue 1. Now, this is a Joey Hill comic book, and uh, this is a... A book where I really like Joe Hill's writing. You know, obviously, you guys know this by now that I'm reading Lock and Key. And I've read some of the other Black Label books of the Joe Hill horror comics that he's come out with. And... This is about a, a ship that has sank, and it looks like there's all kinds of undead things on it, and uh, explorers have to do some exploring and things like that. And Stuart Mononen is the artist behind this, and I like his artwork, so I'm very curious to see what this book has to offer. So there you have it. That book is 32 pages and $3.99. All right, so you're probably wondering why I'm wearing the glasses today. Well, I got some crazy eye thing going on in my left eye. My eye is on fire. I don't know if something happened while I was playing tennis and I got too much sun in the eye, but I'm going to see the doctor today. So bear with me. The video is a little bit off or I don't seem quite with it today. All right. So moving on with number 10. And number 10 this week goes to Justice League issue 41. Okay. Um, issue 40 just came out uh, this past current week right now and this one has to do with our justice league members doing battle against eradicator who is actually bringing these daxamites to earth to take over earth and be the next krypton it always seems like with the justice league they can never get a break there's always this worldwide threat that's going to destroy them right i liked the the, the new issue or the new story arc i thought it was good i thought it was a decent jumping on points for readers um i'm going to see how this story actually goes of course the real thing that's happening in, in dc is the justice league story that snyder wrote is kind of continuing in the dark metal sequel so a lot of people might be paying attention more to that might not care about this story but again if you wanted a jumping on point this was the perfect one this is issue 41 this one is 32 pages three dollars and 99 cents all right Next, coming in at number nine, this is Wonder Woman Dead Earth Issue 2. Now, the first issue of this was really good. It was by the writer of Murder Falcon that did that series from Image Comics. And I love this. Um, this was in an apocalyptic situation that Wonder Woman wound up actually waking up to and she found these bunch of kids and they brought her to this particular kingdom and uh, then they wind up working with her there's all these bad monsters and things like that it's a pretty good book and it looks like um, Wonder Woman is going to have to go to Themyscira and she's going to have to find out like what has happened to it after all this time so this book is 48 pages it's DC Black Label $6.99 all right, next. Coming in at number eight, we have Valkyrie or Jane Foster Valkyrie. Um, 
this is issue eight. Now, this book has been really solid as well. Uh, Jason Aaron has been behind this, and it says, O2 Death of Midgard. So we have Thor, who's teaming up with Jane Foster in this uh, in this particular issue, and this this cancerous contagion that's taking over. What is it? Can they find a cure? Who knows? I'm not sure. But again, the only person that can help her is is uh, Thor. So whether this ties into Thor's series or not, I'm not quite sure yet. But uh, yeah, this is always a good read, and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous here. So this book is 32 pages, uh, three dollars and ninety nine cents. God damn, my eye is on fire. All right, next. Coming in at number seven. Number seven is The Family Tree. This is issue four. Uh, this is done by Jeff Lemire, which is actually really good. And uh, he has this story about people turning into trees. And it's really focused around this family, this daughter that's turning into a tree. Her grandfather is, is trying to help her for, before she becomes this complete thing. And... They're giving her these cures to slow down the disease. The only thing about this book is that it's just a really quick read. Like you can read it and you're done in three minutes. And in the last issue, we see the girl who's turning into the tree actually sees visions of her father now um, as kind of like he is already part of the tree or the forest or whatever the case may be. So it's just like, does she fall into that trap where it's like, I'm just going to let myself completely go and transform myself into a tree? I, I don't know, but it's kind of weird that way. It's a great read. I definitely recommend, rec excuse me, recommend it. And this would probably read really good in, in trade because it's just one of those books where you just want to keep reading, but it just ends, right? All right, so coming in at number six. Number six goes to The Marauders. This is issue eight from Emma with Love. Um, so based off of the last issue of Marauders, which came out this week, uh, we didn't get any update on Kate Pride. They kind of know that she hasn't checked in or she's been out, but they're just thinking like a mission has taken too long or whatever the case may be here. So, and Sebastian Shaw has has basically, you know, his plan has been implemented. Now it's just got to, you know, he thinks that everything is going to fall in line where he's going to take over part of the political aspect of you know the marauders and whatnot and take over kate pride's place and his son's gonna have a chair uh and things like that so we'll see what happens but i really want to see what happens with kate now the only one thing that we got was lockheed was found at the end of this most current issue and it looked like he was dead i don't think he's dead he's probably in some kind of like i don't know sleep mode or something like that where he's trying to protect himself so whatever the case may be we'll see what happens with him and kitty pride so this book is 32 pages three dollars and 99 cents all right next coming in at number five this is it guys this is aquaman issue 57 um this is Mera and Aquaman welcome their very own Aqua Baby in the wake of Black Manta's attack on, on the Amnesty Bay. That's right, guys. Aqua Baby is born, and you are witnessing it right here in issue 57. I can't wait to see what this Aqua Baby looks like, what they're actually going to call him. Uh, so if this is a book that you you know are speculating on or whatnot, to, this might be the book to pick up here. Uh, I'm very curious to see what this Aqua Baby has in store uh, for the future for DC Comics. Does it take over the father's legacy? Does Aquaman eventually die? Does Mira live on after the birth? Like, what's going to happen with all this? There's all kinds of things. So, yeah, I'm checking it out. Hopefully, you guys do too. And this was number five. So, let's move on to number four. And number four this week goes to Teen Titans uh, issue 39. This is otherwise known as the Jin War has begun. Um, so our Teen Titans have to uh, 
get the jinn back into the real world. Um, and this book has been really good. And it just says, the, the, the jinn war has begun. Adam Glass is joined by new co-writer Robbie Thompson, Spider-Man slash Deadpool slash Spidey meets the scrolls. So this is kind of cool. He's got a new co-writer now. And so this will take these stories hopefully much further because I love Adam Glass on this on this book. I say it all the time. It's really, really good. You guys should put it on your pull list. Um, if they have any back issues, I suggest that you pick it up. I really think it started off in 20 or 25 with this team. It's so good, man. But uh, yeah, character development is great. And it shows sometimes a little softer side of Damien. He's not always such a dick. In the beginning of this series or in this run that Adam Glass is writing, um, yeah, he kind of was you know, more hard-headed, but he's kind of softened up. And that's what's been so great about this book is all the character development here. So again, 32 pages, $4 book. Definitely recommend this one. All right. So heading into the top three now, we're moving on to Batman issue 89. So this one moves up on the list um, because based off of issue 88, we definitely seen some uh, progression with the story and the pieces are starting to come together. We have this grand designer who is making up Gotham. Um, we see that Catwoman is involved and we see that a whole bunch of the uh, rogues gallery ha in the past came up with this plan to all come together. And what is that plan? We don't quite know yet, but we do know some of the players that are involved, which looks like, you know, Joker and Harley Quinn and Penguin, the Riddler and Catwoman. So how does this affect Batman's relationship with Catwoman. And also in the near future, we're going to be getting this new character um, that was announced in Newsarama today. And I put this on my Facebook group page as well. Uh, a punchline who kind of looks like a Harley Quinn-esque character, uh, but she looks like she's much more rich in maybe the martial arts and whatnot. So is she going to be the girl that replaces the Joker side? I don't know. That's still yet, you know, too early to be determined, but we'll see. So now I can see a little bit more of Tinian's the fourth, you know, vision with Batman, and it's come together nicely, and I'm really enjoying it now. So I'm looking forward to this issue, and this one is 32 pages, four dollars. All right, next. Coming in at number two, this goes to Wolverine issue one. That's right, baby. The best is back. Wolverine's been through a lot. He's been a loner. He's been a killer. He's been a hero. He's been an Avenger. He's been to hell and back. And now, as the nation of Krakoa brings together all mutant kind, he can finally be happy? Well, we'll see what happens in this book. Now, this series is written by Benjamin Percy who writes X-Force. So if you like X-Force, you might like the Wolverine book. And hopefully Wolverine and X-Force kind of go hand in hand together. Um, so it makes for a, a real cohesive type of story. Um, but Wolverine's been a lot in this X-Force book so far. And he's also um, been a lot in every other book. But I feel like X-Force, he's been most prominent, I guess. And I'm curious to see what this new run has to offer for its readers. This book is 68 pages, guys, and it's $7.99. So stay tuned for this one. All right. And what is my number one book for February 19th, 2020? Well, this one has got to go to Deceased, Unkillables Issue 1. You guys know I'm the zombie guy. I love these horrific apocalyptic zombie books. I was a huge fan of The Walking Dead. I loved Deceased uh, overall, written by Tom Taylor. Well, now there's the miniseries called The Unkillables, and this is issue one. And so I'm really looking forward to this one. And this says, the blockbuster DC series returns to answer this question. What did the villains do when the heroes failed and the world ended? That's what happened because all the heroes wound up leaving, going to a different Earth. But what happened to all the other heroes that were changed into zombies? I guess we'll find out in this mini-series. I'm really looking forward to this one. This one's got some badass variant covers. 
So pick your choice here. This one is 48 pages, $4.99. And there is my number one most anticipated comic for February 12th, 2019. Sorry, February 19th, 2019, 2020. My gosh, jeez. Well, there you have it. Just, just my anticipated comics, okay? Now in the comments below, guys, I want to hear what your most anticipated comics are for that week. Is it your top 10? Do you have a top five, a top three, or maybe just that one comic that you're most excited for? So guys, I wanna hear all those thoughts below. Again, don't forget to sign up for that Facebook group page, Comic Book Corner 2.0, Webheads Unite. I look forward to seeing you there. And guys, until that next video, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, and thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, bye.